Okay. So those are soya long cucumbers. That one there is about ready to pick. We usually when the little pricklies come off is when we pick, pick them. These are picklers here. So that's what we have growing here. Then next to that, we've got some butternut squash. And then we have some butternut squash on the other side. Here we have, uh, this is honeydew growing vertically. This is a cantaloupe here, which needs to be tied up. So there's nothing cooler than seeing cantaloupe, watermelon, and pumpkins and so forth growing vertically. Yeah. yeah. Have you, I don't, maybe I've missed it. Have you considered putting recipes or meal ideas on your channel to, because a, a lot of us, or at least um, us, when we start to grow things that maybe we didn't used to have in our daily diet, like the beets, we, we never really incorporated beets in our meals, but then we started growing them and they, they were growing in abundance. So we had to figure out what to do with them. Have you, since you've got the growing part down, have you considered putting some recipes or some... We, uh, we do have some recipes out there. A good website to get some good recipes is recipeforeveryone.blogspot.com. Okay. That's Aroxia Kennard's recipe. Uh, that's where she has her recipes. That's another thing that we're considering is honeybees. What, what's your take on honeybees? In Texas, when we were, my wife was growing a garden before I was gardening, um, I noticed that we had like one honeybee come around during the day. So I mentioned to her that we should get some honeybees. So we did. We got three hives and our garden yield quadrupled. And we harvested 350 pounds of honey the first year. I think you have videos on that, I don't do. you? You do. So are you going to do that here in Idaho? I will, yes. Okay. So here we have some more uh, cantaloupe. Over here we have watermelon. Uh, behind you, almost passed those up. Of course, we got the beets. That, we have the beets back here that we saw. This is Swiss chard. This is collards. These are onions. Here, I've got to get these cut. So the uh, I got to cut these tops down. I started there about two weeks ago and never made it any further. Uh, these are candy variety onions here. And then I've got a couple other varieties here. A Walla Walla and uh, another onion. These are tomatillos. You can see down in here. I've never grown these before. It doesn't really make any difference what you want to grow. A everything will grow with the mitt ladder guarding method. So I'm just thought, hey, let's try some tomatillos. They're how, growing like crazy. How long have you been um, using the mitt lighter gardening method? About two and a half years. So you found it in Texas. Yes. So someone introduced it to you or you found it on your own and you started experimenting. I did not experiment with it. It's a, um, I don't experiment with things. I, I test things. Okay. So um, experimenting would be, I would be altering the recipe. I don't alter anything. If I okay. find some, someone's gardening method, I do it exactly how they prescribe it. And then, uh, then there's, no, then it's, I know that I should be getting the results that they're talking about. If I'm getting different results, then I reevaluate what I'm doing or the method. Here's the pump that puts the air in. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. Question? Uh -huh. So, do you take your plants to seedlings and then reseed them and do your own seeds after? So I plant, I grow food, not seeds. Okay. I'm not interested in saving seeds. Uh, like a tomato, it produces the seed at the same time I'm harvesting the fruit. If I want to keep that heirloom seed, I will. But we have well, well over 200,000 seeds. Uh, I want to grow food, and so I buy the seeds. Here we, do you buy them from somewhere? Do you do all heirloom seeds? Is that how you do it? Or? I rarely do heirloom seeds. They don't produce as well. They're not as healthy. Uh, they're not insect resistant or... Um, uh, disease resistant, although the beets you saw, those are heirloom, those are Chicago. I was going to say, those look just like the ones we had, which were yeah. heirloom seeds. So we, we're not picky whether it's heirloom or hybrid. 
because we're looking for what we want to eat and to grow. So we grow both. I'm not. So do you just go buy your seeds at Home Depot per se? I, I make sure I'm buying them from a reputable uh, 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 seed supplier and whoever hold you know and the, and they sell all over. It could be Home Depot, it could be wherever. But I'm not. I never trade seeds. I never get seeds from anybody else. I don't do that. I don't think that's a, that's a wise choice because they could be bringing diseases and who knows what into your garden. Not worth it. So do you buy a specific brand? No. No. Are you trying to get a, a supplier out of him? Is that where we're going? No. Where do no, we I buy them from? No, no. I was just honestly curious if he just goes to the big box store and just sure. purchases them. Yeah. So in big box stores, they have you know they have well known, established, uh, high quality brands there. That's what I buy. I order. If they, may, they I usually don't buy at the big box stores because they usually don't have what I want when I want it because I'm growing in January and everybody else is starting in June. And so, do you ever? So okay, so you usually buy them somewhere else. But so I buy them online or I buy them locally. So do you buy them right when you're going to plant them, or do you ever like, like, like you said, because they don't have them when you want them, go buy them now because you know you want to plant them in December, or do you not want to plant the seeds to sit around that long? Uh, plant seeds will be, you know, you'll get 90, 95 percent germination from seeds that are 20 years old if you keep them frozen. Okay. Frozen. So do you do that with yours? You freeze them? Keep them in the freezer, the refrigerator, or in the coldest spot in the in the uh, basement. So here's some uh, spaghetti squash growing vertically. Oh wow! I like this huge pumpkin. I mean, look at that. Thing. You notice the support I have here around the neck. Uh huh. So oh, last I year see. I had a 25 pound spaghetti squash, and then this takes the weight off the vine. So the, look at this one too. Look how big oh. that. Pumpkin is, I don't think I've seen them grown vertically there. except in your garden. You can get a good view over here. I just can't believe that it's hanging. You and that, how, how big you think that is? 10 pounds? I have no idea. So I think I've seen you talk about this before. Yeah, but we're not there yet. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so we're just, that out. We're just making the loop here. Okay. So now we're going to talk about the geo air. Okay. So right now I have a, I have a thermometer in here. A uh, temperature probe right here inside the geo air box. It's 93.4 degrees in here. Here's the four toilet plan flanges and the tubes that go underground. I'll go ahead and plug in the geo air blower, which is um, a $170 fan I bought on Amazon. It's a hyper fan, eight inch hyper fan. It's in there? Yeah, that's what I okay. need to fill. Okay, so we're starting at, remember what was the temperature? 93.7. Okay. So what's happening right now is I've found that I'm much more, you're not going to see anything down there. Sorry. What I found is that you're going to, what I found is that I'm much more efficient pulling the air through the tubes than pushing the air. So down at the end, you see those tubes laying on the ground. Uh huh black tubes on the west side of the greenhouse is not the best way to, yeah. It's a great way to preheat the, the, the air, so it's not a good idea. So when I get done, that'll all be insulated around with white insulation like you have around air ducting, mm -hmm. the air conditioning ducting. So right now, this little blower is pulling air through those tubes down into the ground eight feet deep. The soil temperature AP deep is 55 degrees. It's taking that, uh, that air is running through those tubes and the thermal, the thermal transfer of the heat from the soil, which is now cooling that air. Okay. Makes sense? Mm -hmm. So we started out with 90 what? 93.7. Okay. I think so, so you're pulling from the ground over there? I'm pulling the air through the tubes. But would it be more efficient to have them up? Because doesn't heat rise? It does. So if you mounted them or something and had the opening up here, would it help? Or What I have found is that if, when it's hot, you notice those are long tubes that will go all the way up to the top of the building. It will. So when I close this down and I want to keep it cool using the geo air, those will be mounted up okay. high. So right now they're just laying on the ground. In the winter, when I want to warm it, I put the tubes on the ground and 
pull that cold air out and blow the, the warmer air back out. And where's where's the output? Right here. Right here. Okay. So feel that. Well, that's cool. Okay, so it's been about cool what two touch. minutes, maybe yeah. three minutes. We dropped how many degrees? 13, 12.9. So let's just check to see what the highest temperature was. Wow. 103 so far, and right now it is 78. Wow. Are you concerned at all about the maximum temperature in the summer? Well, that's why I have the shake clock. So, so I know right now with a 94 degree temperature outside and the shake clock with the, these fans on low, we, can, we were two to three degrees cooler than that. I'm anticipating that we'll be even cooler than that with the geo air on and the doors closed. Okay. So that's that's what I want to test next. Okay. Either with this fan or a different fan, maybe a 510 scroll cage from a, uh, an old furnace or something like that. So I know you're pretty uh, technical with your numbers, so do you, can you tell me the ampage or wattage of this equipment? Because you're that's drawing from your solar panels. That's why I have this plugged into here. Is that a kilowatt? Yep. Oh, yeah. So you can see I'm running at about 65 watts. Gotcha. And you've probably systematically placed that on your fans and everything to see what you're pulling. Well, that that is what that fan is using right now, mm -hmm. which would be far less than what these fans These are, are probably using. negligible. They're, they probably don't pull much. I don't, I don't have not tested that. I yeah. could, but I haven't tested that yet. Okay. So now we're, we drop down from 90 something to 93 to 75. Yeah. And that's amazing. Four minutes. Wow. Now we get down to 65 degrees, pretty consistent when it's hot and out here. Because I mean, it doesn't make a difference how hot it is out here. My ground is going to be 55. Degrees. And it was key to go eight feet down. Is that because of where we're at in Idaho, or is that a good rule of thumb anywhere, you know, in the continental? Uh, that works in Anchorage, Alaska, works in Phoenix, Arizona, works in uh, Shelly, Idaho. Uh, unless your frost line is uh, deeper than four or six, eight feet. So you're going below the frost line. Right. And you said to figure out how much tubing to put in the ground, you take your total square footage and divide by 10. Take your total cubic foot. Cubic foot. And divide by 10. Unless there was some other factor than you did by 12 or something. So if the uh, if the tubes are underneath the structure, you divide by 10. Okay, and if you put them outside the structure... You need 25% more tubing. Okay. All right. Yep. So do you have plans to build more of these because of their efficiency on your property? Or you're I already do. producing more than you, I'll be you can use? I'll be another one that will be growing fruit trees. Lemons, limes, oranges, oh, grapefruits. So you're going to do mangoes. trees. Avocado. Have you, are you, I'm sure you put thought in the types of trees. Are you going to do dwarf or mini dwarf or something because of the ceiling limit? Right. I'll start a few feet lower to begin with. So that'll give me more headroom to grow the trees. Okay. We've, we've planted uh, two apple, two peach, and two pear just to start. They're mini dwarfs, I think they're called. And they're from Costco. Just to start learning. We're, we're learning all this. Right. Um, so we're... We're noticing that um, I was watering them once a week, like it said, a gallon each, but my sprinkler started to come on when the summer heat came around and it hits them from above. And I've noticed that one of the apple leaves is starting to get kind of white and uh, speckly. And Lisa thinks it's because the we shouldn't have the water hitting the leaves. We should Definitely be, not. and you mentioned that here. So what, what's the importance of watering at the root and not hitting the leaves? Well, by hitting the leaves, you're putting moisture on the leaf, and you're going to create a mildew disease problem. And that's possibly what my white stuff is, maybe? It's probably powdery mildew. Okay. Or how mildew. would you, how could I fix that if I could? Well, I mean, uh, can you clean them off, or so what do you do? Right here, uh, let's see. I had some powdery mildew. Kind of here? No, that's all, nope. this is all normal. Okay. That's normal for that variety. Uh, so right here, here's some powdery mildew. Okay. All I need to do is spray that with a copper fungicide because all of these had powdery mildew on here and they're all gone now. And what was, was yours from the same thing? It was getting hit by water outside or something? No, it's just that the humidity is so high here at night 
that it, 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 the whole structure is full, you know, it could be like 80, 90 degrees humidity here at night because I have it closed up. So that's what's causing the mildew problem. So this is, I asked you about our apple tree that's getting sprinkled on and the leaves are turning white. You said it's probably a mildew and there's a spray, copper, mm -hmm. copper spray that we can spray with, but I'll probably have to figure out how to change those sprinkler heads. So they don't hit the mm -hmm. Yeah, we just planted, I think, uh, 20 something pear and apple trees. Where? Here on your property? Yeah. Oh, can we see those when we're done here? Sure. Okay, so let's talk about the watering. So, right outside the greenhouse, we have a water spigot that goes down four feet deep into the ground. I'm shaking. Can you do can that? We just go home and start already. <laughs> He's gonna build another one of these I just, fruit, fruit trees in it. I, I don't know if it makes me more excited to have the food or to have my kids have this or, I mean, look at them. They're going nuts over there. They're, they found ladybugs and they're, I mean, I don't know. All right. That just makes me happy, sorry. Well, so cool. if I see ladybugs, I get concerned. Oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh, because ladybugs are a carnivore. Okay, well, they found two. Two, I'm not concerned about. <laughs> They'll fly in with the bumblebees and the honeybees and they'll come in here and look around and see if there isn't any food then they'll leave. If I, we're talking about a dozen or so, now I'm worried, right? But a couple's fine. So I'll have to show you the video. He just showed me how to fish in his piping air system. I, and I've been showing her as we've been going so she knows some of it. Um, it said 93.7 degrees on the thermometer. He turned it on and within two minutes it was down to 75. From 93 to 75 degrees. Okay, but we just need minutes. to get this start. I just want to get started already. I feel like we keep we're, talking about it and talking about it and uh, talking about it, and well, we're just not doing we've anything been about it. Since Texas, and I wanted to do this that you built in Texas, right? But in Mesa, we didn't have much room. Right. We were on a 0.14 acres, and then in Flagstaff, we were in a rental, and they didn't want us doing anything that changed. We couldn't plant any trees or anything. So now we're finally where we want to be and we have all these things we want to do. But of course it not only takes time, it takes money. Sure. So we're just trying to systematically I know, but the thought of the fact that he's... So is it just the two of you basically that you're feeding at this point? Well, yes. No, he's I feeding mean, his neighbor.